Hey everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic here with a huge news update. Today I'm going to be going over a ton of new Jurassic World Dino Trackers toys from Mattel that are coming out as part of Wave 2 and in some cases probably Wave 3 throughout 2023. And there is a lot to cover here because Mattel is still pumping out so many different figures, so many new unique species, new unique figures that aren't repaints or remolds or anything like that. All new stuff. So there's just so much cool stuff to cover. So bear with me as I get through it and forgive me on some of these dinosaur name pronunciations. Jumping right into the Danger Pack assortment and those hard to pronounce names I, we have, and I'm going to give it my best here, Zoanahanosaurus. Zoanahanosaurus looks sort of like a velociraptor in some ways, but definitely just a more of a traditional sauropod without those claw feet. And I love the paint coloration on this one. Um, looks very much suited for the Arctic, and I love the, the uh, plumage molding on here we have like red feathers and all that and the the kind of snout paint gives this a very bird-like look as well i love those natural color schemes they're doing a lot more and more as the line continues um giving these animals um definitely something more inspired by uh real world animals of today kind of applying it um you know to these prehistoric creatures instead but this one looks really cool i've never heard of this dinosaur before but um, my head cannon's already spinning with sort of the again more like cold weather look they gave it um kind of what this could mean in terms of uh you know what engine created for jurassic world um you know what does that mean for a dinosaur like this so pretty cool maybe even somewhat related to pyroraptor in terms of uh arctic habitat in the biosyn valley maybe who knows uh that's the kind of stuff i love to you know kind of think about on my own but definitely uh, a cool figure in that it's all new uh, not a retool or a repaint or anything like that um, it does look like the biome on the actual packaging shows it in the mountains. So I guess that, um, you know, that, that coloration is intentional in terms of, uh, indicating its habitat. So starting off strong with an all new figure and then jumping over to the, uh, two pin again, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, been a while since we've gotten an original pterodactyl from Mattel Jurassic World. You know, we have tons of dimorphodons and tranodons and, uh, we have some, uh, I think we had a tape jara at some point, which this one's very similar to also had the Ramphoricus and Quetzalcoatlus. So we've had a lot of different, um, um, flying reptiles from Mattel over the years. And this one, like I said, definitely is reminiscent of Tape Jara, but it looks a little bit more, um, you know, natural compared to Tape Jara. That one had a very cartoony look, but I really like this one. I love the paint on the, uh, the beak there on the top and the bottom. And of course that crest over its head has some beautiful detail, that eye popping out of that darker coloration too. And the articulation here looks pretty nice. We have the jaws that open, the wings that rotate, but it looks like um, the jaws will be able to open from top and bottom, perhaps, if not at least from the bottom. And we also have some leg articulation too, hoping those legs are uh, articulate independently of one, one another so we can get some cool poses. It doesn't look like this one's able to um, do any kind of walking pose, but the flying pose looks great. Here you can see the um, scan tag is going to be on that back door. <laughs> A lot of their um, scan tags on these flying reptiles are on their back like that. It's a little clunky, um, but it does blend in um, more or less somewhat well. Here's the packaging shot. You can see this is meant to be part of the desert biome for the Dino Trackers line. So I can kind of see it, but um, really nice colors in any case, regardless of where it's supposed to be kind of originating from in terms of habitat. Next up is another hard to pronounce dinosaur for me, um, the Piazzanacosaurus. Piazzanacosaurus. Hope I'm saying that right, but again, feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, I'm giving it my best here. Um, but this one's an interesting one, definitely a little more stylish looking in terms of uh, you know the proportions and all that. But one thing I love about this one is it's very chicken-like that it sort of has that little like gizzard hanging from its neck. Not something we see a lot in modern renditions of dinosaurs, that loose skin kind of dripping under its chin, but it's it's a unique um, kind of silhouette for this one. And his jaw is very, very, um, you know, it's got a big notch in it. So very obvious, um, probably nod to the, uh, you know, anatomy of the actual skeleton, I'm hoping. If not, um, definitely taking some artistic license there, but lots of little ridges and, you know, lines and crests and all kinds of like that kind of 
extraneous detail on this otherwise you know pretty standard looking sauropod but i like the coloration too i love that orange crest on the head all that all that look is looking really well in terms of color if only that paint went down to the tail i think it would look even better but still we are already um three for three on unique looking dinosaurs unique figures for mattel um for the danger pack wave so can't complain too much and i can't wait to get this one in hand so i can really get a hold of all that uh, detail it has all that was cracked cracked uh, scales and all that but moving on we got uh the final figure in this wave i believe it's a danger pack pyro raptor and this one's unique because it's our first repaint of pyro raptor that isn't directly inspired um from a jurassic world dominion right um this is something a little bit different. A lot of people pointed out that it's very much inspired by a macaw parrot. If you Google it and kind of put them side by side, this is sort of a little more desaturated take on a macaw, but definitely clearly inspired by that with the um, kind of blue and yellow offset. But even on the face itself with that black and white, um, definitely similar to a macaw parrot. So this one's really, really cool. Uh, when I first saw it, I kind of thought it was clownish, but now that I see the real world inspiration for it, I actually have a new look level of appreciation for it here you can see the scan tags popping out of the back um, pretty standard stuff there but yeah i mean i think this is a beautiful kind of re refresh of pyro raptor if we're going to have to get a repaint um might as well be something you know truly unique especially leaning into uh one of the animal designs that has a lot of feathers you know why not really uh, connect back to something um, real like the the macaw in this case for the power raptor so pretty excited about this one even if it is just a repaint moving on to the strike attack assortment we have our first figure here the gigant spinosaurus um, not to be confused with spinosaurus or giganotosaurus um, this is uh I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Gigantospinosaurus, um, but it, lo it looks very similar to a lot of the other kind of stegosaurids we've already gotten from Mattel, um, you know, but this one's definitely, I think, probably the one of the better looking ones we've gotten. Um, I think the last Chilingosaurus was kind of an odd looking one. Then we had the Dominion line one whose name escapes me right now with the big long neck. Um, but I'm really liking the look of this one. I like the way they painted the plates on the back and the big horns. Um, it very much reminds me of Sauropelta with those big horns, but they painted them. It's got a cool action attack feature here where if you move the tail, it moves the head. And they also cleverly hid that scan tag um, underneath one of the plates on the back. Um, but I mean, overall, the coloration for me for this one I'm just really digging. I'm guessing this is a desert dino trackers biome because it feels very desert-y um, and they really leaned into that inspiration there in terms of how it um, kind of directed the coloration of this figure. So I would say out of the last few stegosaurs, again, this one's a big improvement over kind of the last couple smaller ones we got. So um, yeah, let's take a look at this one and packaging it does look like it is a desert uh, biome dinosaur. So um, definitely clearly influenced there. Um, but a really cool figure. I do wish it had a little bit more paint on the spikes uh, on its tail and the plates by its neck, but I'll take what I can get. It actually looks pretty nice. Next up, this one's really cool, Prestosuchus. I don't know much about this animal. I'm guessing it's not truly a dinosaur, but um, in that case, all the more exciting. I love the Ornithosuchus, uh, the, uh, you know, the Dimetrodons we've gotten. A couple of the other non-dinosaur figures we've gotten are always fun to collect, so... Um, Sarcosuchus comes to mind too. So we got Prestosuchus here. It's really cool because it has this very dynamic pose. You know, we get a lot of neutral poses with Mattel figures, but this one actually looks a little more dynamic. It's crouched down to the ground, um, which I think kind of gives it a little bit more of a character. Um, it does have an action feature in that you press a button on the back. It's going to kind of buck its jaws open. Pretty standard stuff um, for Mattel Jurassic figures having those... Um, you know, those those jaws are tied to an action feature. So nothing too fancy there, but scan tag also built in the back ridge there. And you can see this thing ha does have a little bit of extra detail uh, above and below the tail, sort of like a fin, if you will. So maybe this one is meant to be semi-aquatic. Again, that could just be my head cannon talking, but I think it's a very lovely looking figure. It doesn't have a ton of paint on it, but the paint that it does have, um, I think it uses, um, you know, pretty well with the, uh, you know, un under jaw being white and then that kind of lighter color coming back in on the back. And again, sort of feels a little bit like aquatic with the way they did those stripes in the back. 
feels a little bit like caustic lighting, some of that reflection you get when you're underwater. So Prestosuchus, and it does have that water icon for the biome too. So <clears throat> all makes sense. It's sort of something semi-aquatic anyway. Next up, a familiar face. This is the Strike Attack Dilophosaurus. Uh, this would be a true repaint. I think this is probably the third, maybe eh, probably the fourth time uh, this this figure has been repainted, this particular sculpt. We've had a lot of Dilophosaurus over the years, but this particular one is crouched downward with the action feature all tied up um, in the frill, which we'll look at here in a second. But um, I like the darker colors here. It reminds me of the Prestosuchus even. Um, you know, we have so many different Dilophosaurus figures. It is nice to get one with, um, you know, some more contrast and something a little more um, maybe like mon monotone versus some of the really colorful ones we've gotten. Here you can see that action feature again in, in play. But yeah, I mean, the, the darker colors really contrast off the lighter colors here. So if that's kind of what's the signature deco for this one, I think it works. Uh, yeah, a little bit of odd inclusion of the DNA tag here on that trap door, but there's so many probably mechanisms inside they can't really afford to <clears throat> dig in there and have the tag be one that pulls out. But um, I also like how they added the dark tip to the tail. It's kind of funny because you get the dark, darker color up front. It kind of uh, fades off into stripes and dots before going blank and then coming back on the tail. So kind of interesting. Um, but I think the final figure here in package shows that it still does have that darker paint on the tail. So um, I like it. It's kind of like a, almost like a uh, albino Dilophosaurus or, you know, um, cave Dilophosaurus or something. There goes that head cannon from me again. Uh, speaking of head cannon, the last figure I want to talk about for strike attack is this new Atrociraptor. Uh, again, sort of like the Pyroraptor danger pack we already looked at. They're already taking a film species and recoloring it. Of course, we did get a Atrociraptor repaint with the um, the new vehicle set for Dino Trackers, and this one just adds to that. But what's cool about this Atrociraptor is it does have head quills on it, um, on top of having totally different coloration from any of the Atrociraptors in the movie. It also sports a little bit of um, plumage on the back of its head, very much like the Jurassic Park 3 Raptors that had the quills. So um, not just a repaint, but uh, almost a tweak on the mold itself so i'm already like kind of envisioning myself building out a another atrociraptor pack of course we have you know ghost and red and pantera and tiger but now there's going to be a, another four pack hopefully maybe we'll get a couple more atrociraptor figures um this year or next that do have some interesting paint colorations different from dominion because i'm here for it i'm here to build a whole another separate pack um yeah, you can see the scan tag there. Obviously, it has an action feature um, with the the button on the back too, like all these strike attack figures do. Um, these press pictures make it look super super saturated, but um, as you know, the um, you know the final picture of the the figure in the box is usually a little bit more true to what we will um, find in store. So that's that's this one right here, looking very bright, very dart frog ish, right? Um, at least for me, it is. So um, I'm excited by this one. Great fun bright color. Um, on a uh, new take on a species we already have. Um, moving on to Wild Roar. Speaking of new take on a species we already have, take a look at the new Wild Roar Irritator here. Um, we did have an Irritator early on in the Primal Attack line um, a couple years ago, but this is almost a totally revisited figure with amazing coloration. Here you can see the action feature. Um, there's a little um, switch on the back that makes the head thrash back and forth. But I mean, look at the cool wave in the tail, the darker color that kind of graduates to the tail and also on the snout too, all that flecking on the snout. Here you can see from the other angles, it's just a switch really that just goes back and forth that makes the the head rotate. Hoping that means that the um, the the mouth is, um, is uh, articulated, but I don't think it is. In fact, I actually think it is tied to maybe an action feature. We'll see. But here you can see the scan tag cleverly hidden in that frill, um, moving alongside the irritator's back. I mean, talk about a dinosaur that looks like it's supposed to be aquatic with that tail um, and that sort of lower to the ground stature. But um, really, really cool. The other irritator, you know, had those interlocking teeth too, but it did look a little bit goofier, a little bit less naturalistic, especially with the colors. But this one looks like it addresses some of that. Um, and I, I, I think, I think this is a clear, a clear upgrade. Granted, we do have a Hammond collection version, which is going to be, you know, on a kind of another level in terms of articulation and proportions. But, um, you know, for a Coraline figure, I love this kind of new take on a species we only ever got 
one figure of. Moving on to strike attack, we have uh, Regaliceratops. I hope I'm saying that one right, too. Man, I'll be honest with you. This has got to be one of my least favorite figures that we're looking at um, coming out of, uh, you know, 2023 from Mattel. i just not too impressed with this one. Sometimes I feel like, oh... The mold is good, but the paint is bad. The paint is bad, but the you know, the paint is good, but the mold is. But you know, this one I just feel like no amount of paint is going to fix what you know isn't a very interesting looking dinosaur toy. Granted, I'm sure Regaliceratops has a beautiful actual skeleton, um, scientifically speaking. But as far as uh, you know, a unique toy goes, there's not really much to look at. This looks like more of a generic Triceratops than anything. I appreciate the little quills or feathers. Um, kind of coming out the back side of it, but that unfortunately doesn't make it any more, you know, doesn't really add too much to it to kind of combat what is a really strange, bizarre paint job and sort of, again, um, almost like a generic um, design. Again, I, I am sure the skeleton, you know, is unique to Triceratops, but unfortunately when it comes to the action figure, this is just looking like sort of a, a knockoff of Triceratops and that paint coloration just adds to sort of the, you know, the uh, genericness here, I guess. But I'm sure there's some people out there who love how many um, Ceratops scenes Mattel has been putting out. It's certainly more than I can count. We have Diablo Ceratops for one this year, um, and you're already getting another figure in that size with uh, Regalis Ceratops. So um, if you like Ceratops scenes, Mattel has you covered. Um, next up, we have Orco Raptor. I've never heard of this dinosaur, um, but this action figure looks incredible. This is probably one of my favorites. For Galaceratops is one of my least favorites. This has got to be one of my favorites coming out. Um, I love this this um, you know bird inspired paint deco with the stripes on the tail. There's so many. It almost looks like a wooly raptor. There's so much feathers on this one. I mean, it just looks bulky and kind of almost chunky, but not chunky because it's a you know a heavy animal with lots of fat chunky because it has so much feathers hanging off of it so i also love the big claws sort of somewhere between a velociraptor and a therizinosaurus almost it's got that switch you can see that makes the head thrash back and forth again i'm really hoping that the mouth is articulated on these because i'd love to be able to close the mouth and open the mouth um, at will and i think it is i don't think it's a um, attached to the action feature but we'll have to wait till we get this one in hand to see skin tag uh, hides in back there behind the hips really nicely. Um, love that. I love the face on this one. I mean, Mega Raptor was an awesome figure they did too. So, Orca Raptor looks to sort of um, repeat that success. That was definitely one of my favorite figures from last year. So, this one might be one of my new favorites. Again, that those stripes on the tail just totally make this one um, really interesting dual tone color they have going on here with uh with orco raptor don't know a lot about orco raptor as a as a figure but it's this one's biome is in the mountains so that's why they're adding uh, all those feathers so pretty cool um my last uh wild war figure i have to go off of i don't have any great photos of it but i didn't want to leave it out of this video this is nigrosaurus um a uh you know um bigger sauropod um i'm guessing you know that it's probably going to be a little bit cooler looking at it um, away from these blurry photo of it in box but um we don't get a lot of these silhouettes in the mattel jurassic line so it's cool to see us getting another um you know bigger theropod here um and yeah i i'm i don't ha i'm gonna withhold judgment to see more photos does look a little simplistic here but i, I definitely want to see the figure out of the box before i get too critical of it which brings us to the uh, last assortment not the last figures we're going to be looking at but the last sort of assortment um for dino trackers we had danger pack strike attack wild roar here's gigantic tracker and one of my most anticipated figures the elasmosaurus this thing's gorgeous i've loved elasmosaurus since i was a kid um i mean i, I knew about it more than i knew about plesiosaurus because it is kind of the bigger uh you know relative of plesiosaurus and the mattel version looks in so so cool i love the coloration of it almost looks like a snake it's got some really nice detail on it throughout i mean look at that striping that goes down um, into the body it just uh, they've done a really good job um, on all of their aquatic reptiles sourcing paint decos that are inspired by real world animals like whales and seals and, and sharks and, and applying it back to these um, water reptiles just looks so cool and you can see here elasmosaurus has some action features some buttons that cause it to um, lunge 
hinge up and down and swing back and forth to. It does look like in this case, maybe the mouth is tied to that action feature. Um, no electronics or anything, but it does have that scan tag. And a more, most importantly, it does have a, an accessory. It has this really cool harness on it that all the gigantic tracker figures have, um, which really adds the playability, playability here and sort of, you know, where could this where could this figure fit in the Jurassic um, storyline in terms of having like this cool harness? Big, big, big figure, huge fins. Um, I got to track this one down. Definitely one of my most excited four figures of 2023 from Mattel Jurassic Jurassic World Dino Trackers. Um, moving on, another hard to pronounce one, uh, Bistahavasaur. I'm sure I'm not saying that right, so please forgive me. But Bistahavasaur here, another figure with a um, harness that definitely adds to some, um, you know, that adds to the playability here. Uh, I love the, almost looks like it has ammo packs on it, but it's actually for, you know, our umpteenth sort of Tyrannosaur derived, uh, theropod. It actually looks really, really cool in this upscale, uh, on this up, up close shot. Um, and again, it does have a little bit of a dynamic pose where it's purposefully sort of has its back arch down to the ground but it looks like the action feature actually makes it chomp down at the ground too otherwise it's sort of pointing its head up while um while being um pointed down to the ground and the other action feature on this one is very interesting it actually makes those tail quills on the back flay out side to side um, i'm sure that's not based on anything scientific but it is kind of a interesting way to get an action feature in on some of those feathery quills um, here you can see those quills from the side but yeah they're going to be kind of flattening and going up so kind of kind of interesting uh, animation we haven't seen on these toys. And again, there's that harness looking so cool um, throughout the body and around the head. Um, and of course the harness comes off, but I, I just love the way these gigantic tracker figures look with the harness on because honestly, most of the Mattel toys we've been collecting don't have any kind of capture gear or anything like that. So whenever we can see it on the figures, I think it looks cool. So I kind of wish all the figures came with it, but at least um, this larger um, uh, no electronic, but bigger assortment, but more expensive assortment, um, kind of adds the, adds the value there. If it doesn't have electronics like the wild roars, at least it comes with this cool accessory. This one, next one is a huge surprise for me. Was not expecting this. Not a, again, not an assortment figure, but its own thing. That's just the habitat defender triceratops, sort of like the ocean protector mosasaurus then that's come before it, um, made from recycled plastic, but the habitat defender triceratops is cool because a, it looks like the Jurassic park triceratops. It's clearly based off the Hammond collection triceratops and B and probably the most exciting of all. It's huge. It's a massive figure, um, definitely bigger than the core line Mattel triceratops. And it probably has some element of real feel skin because it's made of that recycled plastic. So we're getting a, you know, more size appropriate, Jurassic Park inspired triceratops, um, you know, with some sort of like rubbery skin. So kind of a dream come true for me. This thing looks beautiful. I do think it's inspired by, um, you know, like all down trackers. It's supposed to kind of fit into a biome somewhere. And this one's supposed to be desert, which, um, you know, uh, kind of explains the coloration here. But honestly, it still looks like a Jurassic Park triceratops, even with these kind of tweaked colors here. So um, more to come on this one, definitely one that, you know, once we see in hand, we'll really be able to form an opinion on, but it already looks great in these promo shots. So pretty excited about the Habitat Defender Triceratops. Um, rounding out our showcase here, we have the Hunt and Chop Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, it wouldn't be a Mattel Jurassic year if they didn't do their own unique T-Rex figure. And this year's Hunt and Chop T-Rex uh, has that tracking gear that a lot of the bigger expensive figures have. And also has a all new, almost like tiger stripe paint deco. Um, pretty light in color, but it does have some very prominent stripes that none of the other Mattel Jurassic dinosaurs have really had. Mattel Jurassic T-Rexes rather have had. So that's kind of what makes this one special. Also no electronics this year. Um, which does make the figure a cheaper price point. I think it's $34.99 where they're usually about $39.99 and upwards. So no electronics, um, does have action features, which I'll go over here in a second, but I, I dig this coloration. It's definitely, um, a little bit different, but, um, again, 
sort of tiger stripe esque. You can see the action feature here with one button press. You're going to get uh, mouth opening and a little bit of head rotation as well. Um, and the tail looks like is literally just articulated here. Does have the scan tag back there. You're also seeing a peak of this um, tracking gear harness that it has, which again really makes this T Rex unique to this year. Is that instead of just capture gear, it breaks out and does have this tracking gear on it, like a harness. Um, and that you can put on or take off and I'm guessing it'll fit a lot of the other T-Rexes too but definitely making this um, 2023 version live up to the Dino Tracker's name with that tracking gear that it has so that's the Hunt and Chomp Tyrannosaurus um, coming out from Mattel and that is basically um, almost everything on the way that we know of right now for the Mattel's Dino Trackers line in 2023 of course we have other sub lines we have the Legacy Collection 93 Classic um, we have the Epic Damage and of course we have Hammond Collection too so I, I covered a lot of toys in this video but there's still actually so many more to come um, and I'm just excited about all of them because there's just so many new unique species um, new play features all that stuff and some great figures like elasmosaurus that i cannot wait to get my hands on but i think that's all i got for now again i'm tim with collect jurassic thanks for watching and i'll see you next time